Yo, what's up guys? My name is Kareem. Today we're gonna take a look at the Tamron 20 millimeter and the Samyang 24 millimeter. They're both at f2.8. This video is for anyone who's looking to buy one of these lenses and use it mainly for video. We're gonna go over a lot of things. I'm gonna list all of them right here right now. Also, I'm gonna put the timestamps in the description. So if you guys wanna just skip to a specific part, you can do that easily without any hassle. This video is gonna be pretty long. So grab some popcorn, save your money for now, because I'm gonna tell you exactly which one you should buy for video, in my opinion. Also, a quick thing to note, this video is not sponsored by Tamron or Samyang. I bought both of them with my own money. With that out the way, let's start. Let's start with the Tamron. It's definitely taller, it's wider, it's definitely heavier than the Samyang. It feels expensive in the hands. It honestly feels like you're holding a Sony lens or something equivalent to that. You know the usual Tamron quality that you would come to expect from Tamron if you ever bought any Tamron lens. It comes with the hood, has a weather sealing gasket, which is amazing, and it has a 67 millimeter filter thread. And for the Samyang, it's tiny compared to the Tamron. It feels way more plasticky than the Tamron. It feels like it's more fragile than the Tamron. And sadly, it doesn't have the weather ceiling gasket. It does have a very small hood though, and it has a filter thread of a 41 millimeter. So Samyang is way, way, way smaller than the Tamron. So since the Samyang is way smaller than the Tamron, obviously for people out there who's looking to keep their sit up very light and very convenient to move around, the Samyang would be the winner in this category, but the Tamron also has a weather ceiling, so you have to know where you're gonna go. If you're gonna go to a place that has a lot of rain and the weather is very harsh, I would definitely recommend the Tamron. Now for the weight, the Tamron comes in with the hood at 240 grams, and without the hood, it comes in at 218 grams. As for the Samyang, it comes in at 97 grams with the hood and 91 grams without the hood. So obviously the Samyang is way lighter than the Tamron. Now let's talk about the build quality of the Tamron. It feels nice, it has a rubber focus ring, it's designed in Japan, and it's made in Vietnam. Like I said, build quality is very, very solid from Tamron, and the fact that it has a weather sealing gasket is also a plus. As for the Samyang, it feels more like a toy, it feels like a little more plasticky, but you would be surprised because that toy looking lens actually has a smoother focus ring than the Tamron one. Huge plus for the Samyang. I would definitely give it to Samyang in this category. I almost dropped the lens. You almost saw that happen. So let's go ahead and take a look at the footage and see which lens looks sharper on what resolution. So we're gonna start with the Samyang. And as you guys see, when we're on 120 frames per second, 1080p, the Samyang looks way, way sharper than the Tamron at f2.8 and I think the fact that the Tamron is a little wider than the Samyang could also play a factor in the sharpness because it's a little harder to maintain sharpness at wide focal lengths so maybe that's a reason. Now as we move to 4k as you guys can tell there's barely any difference between them when it comes to sharpness. I still feel like the Samyang is a little tiny teeny little bit more sharper than the Tamron but honestly when you're shooting 4k it doesn't really matter if you're not going to use 120 frames per second they're basically both the same to you now that we talked about video sharpness let's go ahead and talk about the bokeh and how it looks so as we start looking at the bokeh at both of them at 2.8 the circles look round they look okay they look good at f3.2 both of them are the same too both of them look really good and then at f5 the samyang is holding up pretty good but the tamron on the other side we're starting to see the straight lines in the bokeh in the background so that's something to notice with the tamron once you go above f5 you're gonna start to see the bokeh looking a little weird and then at f8 as you guys could see the tamron's bokeh is looking really bad it's starting to look like hexagons in the background basically but the samyang on the other hand it's holding up really really good and the circles are actually pretty round for an f8 so that's something to know and then at f14 to the samyang there's a little deformity in the circles now we're really starting to see anything happening in the samyang but the tamron at this point as you can see you're basically just looking at hexagons uh, when it comes to bokeh in the background now let's talk about the distortion in the tamron and the samyang right off the bat as soon as i got the tamron as soon as i got my hands on it i took a video i looked at it and i was like oh my god the distortion is horrible in this lens i really don't like the distortion in the tamron at all it almost looks as bad as a 16 millimeter 
I mean, we're only four millimeters away from being a 16 millimeter, so it does make sense. But at the same time, we're at 20 millimeter and the distortion is horrible. As you can see, when I put the lens on the table and then I took the video, the table looks really, really bad. And so if you're gonna use this lens for maybe a product showcase or something, maybe that's not a good route to take. But the Samyang, I love the fact that it doesn't have as much of a distortion as the Tamron. It's barely noticeable on the Samyang, which I love. When taking a look at the car video for example that shot of the car uh when you look at it with the tamron 20 millimeter it almost looks like a 16 millimeter and there's definitely a little bit of distortion on the car which honestly i think makes the car not look as good as it would look without the distortion so if you do a lot of car videography or a lot of car photography for that matter i think you should definitely choose the Samyang because as you can see in the other clip, the Samyang has way less distortion when it comes to the car. Also, another thing to note when it comes to the Tamron, as you can see in the car clip, when you're standing stationary away from the car, you can barely notice the distortion. So if you're taking a video of the car from far away or anything like that, I think you can get away with not showing as much of a distortion as you would normally show for the distortion. I definitely give it to Samyang, Samyang, great job. If there's one thing I really, really like about this Tamron lens, I would definitely say it's macro capability. It's awesome. As you guys see, the minimum focus distance for the Tamron is only one inch away from the lens, which is just amazing. For the Samyang, the minimum focus distance is six inches away, which is obviously not as good as the Tamron. I also wanted to throw in that shot with the Tamron 20 millimeter, showing off its macro capability with this little book shot, as you guys can see, looks amazing. With that being said, when it comes to focus distance, I would definitely give it to the Tamron. Tamron, great job for nailing the macro capability. And it's time for the autofocus test. So as you guys are seeing, I'm not really taking it easy at all when it comes to autofocus testing on both the lenses. I'm moving diagonally back and forth, left and right, in all the directions you can imagine. The Samyang is definitely doing really, really good. Super smooth. It's catching up with me really good. It's catching up with me really smoothly. And as you guys see, see i get really close to the lens and i get in focus i go back all the way really quickly it still catches me in focus now when it comes to the tamron it also performs really really good too i've seen some videos that say it doesn't perform as good when it comes to the video but honestly i think it performs really good and is definitely usable but i think it's a little bit slower than the samyang with that being said in this category autofocus i'm definitely gonna give it to the samyang because it just does a little bit better job like a little bit of a better job than the Tamron so when it comes to having both the lenses on the gimbal, I think both of them performed okay with the focus being tracked to the lens that was on the table. Tamron is a little bit on the slower side. Samyang is catching up pretty good. Both of them are not perfect. They lose it sometimes, but like I said, Samyang catches on a little quicker than Tamron. With that being said, they're both very usable with the autofocus. Both these gimbal shots are shot at 24 frames per second 4K. So when it comes to the autofocus noise, I would definitely definitely have to go with Samyang that it's way way quieter than the Tamron. Tamron is definitely not as loud as other lenses but it has that little squeaking noise that you can hear it but the Samyang it's virtually quiet like it's you can't hear anything. When it comes to autofocus noise, Samyang is definitely the winner. Now, when it comes to shooting handheld, I feel like each one of them has its own perks. For example, I really like the way the Samyang looks because of the 24 millimeter focal length, but I really like the fact that with the Tamron, you can get really, really close if you're shooting handheld. But when it comes to which one is more stable, I would definitely go with the Samyang. I feel like it's a little more stable than the Tamron, but that's about it really when it comes to shooting IBIS handheld. So I run the DJI 
DJI Ronin 3 and it's basically my go-to setup with the a7 III and whatever lens I put on the camera. At the beginning, I thought Samyang with that gimbal would be a little more uh, difficult because it's very, very small and I might have problems balancing it. But to my surprise, it's very, very easy to balance it and the gimbal handles it really fine. It's very good for travel too because it keeps the whole setup very compact and very minimalistic. Gimbal footage was really smooth with both of them. Overall, for video work, for my personal case, I think I would actually choose the Samyang. I really like the fact that it doesn't have that much of a distortion. Now I know that 24 millimeter is literally the best focal length for video work. Minimum focus distance is not that big of a deal because I don't really shoot that handheld that often anyway. But even if I decide to do shoot handheld a lot, I think six inches are way more than enough to shoot handheld with this lens. I definitely recommend it for video work for all the videographers out there. If you get that lens with the Sony a7 III like me, and if you have the DJI Ronin S or whatever gimbal you have, you're gonna be very happy with this setup. You're gonna be very happy with this lens. It's just honestly an amazing lens overall, not to say that Tamron is a bad one, but for video work, I believe this is the best one. Now, if you wanna go shoot some astrophotography, then the Tamron is definitely way better for you and you should definitely get that. But if you're gonna shoot just video work, Samyang is the one for you. I would definitely go for it. I would highly recommend it. And you also save 50 bucks from the Tamron because the Tamron comes in at around $300. This one comes in at around $250. Not bad at all for everything you get in this lens. With that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to like it. And if you dislike the video and you think I could have done a better job, then dislike the video and let me know in the comments down below to do a better job because I do this not only for me, but also for you. If this is your first time in my channel, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you can get notifications whenever I upload videos like these. And if you have any other video recommendations or ideas or whatever, let me know in the comments down below. If you want to connect with me, definitely hit me up on my Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and you go out there, shoot some dope content and have an amazing day.